Are you ready? I'm ready. Hey everybody, this is Leon and today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own Forgeo uh, actions. Uh, what are actions? Well, it's like GitHub actions, your own CI, CD pipelines. What is Forgeo? Well, it's basically your own GitHub, your own GitLab and Bitbucket, only one um, with your own Trello, what, what have you. And the, the whole point is that uh, Forgeo, a fork of Gitia, a fork of Gox, like these things are really easy to set up, um, really lightweight. And yeah, it, it basically, um, you know, shows that people, you know, go, go self-host your own stuff. You don't really need uh, these very big, um, massive products like GitHub. Like you don't really need that. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into this. Um, so first, I will sign in, and um, yeah, you can also sign in with GitHub, GitLab, and all these things. You can migrate stuff. It's it's really cool. But anyways, I'm an administrator here, so if in the site administration there is this actions tab with runners and here you can see that I've successfully set one up um, it's idle and I can actually run um, actions now they work uh, what did I do well I basically clicked this button it gives you a red registration token and uh, the only thing you have to do more is uh, run uh, a small application with this token and then that becomes a runner so you can have uh, all kinds of uh, idle servers uh, raspberry pis uh, smartwatches whatever you can basically let them um, function as runners for your pipelines so this is i was really amazed how simple this was um, i will show you a script i, I created a small bash scripts script in which I uh, sort of you know uh, registered the runner that's step one and the second one is run the daemon so that it it keeps listening for for tasks basically um, so here is the script uh, I've uh, the most important thing is that uh, you need a token and you need a URL of your of your uh, your Forjo instance so um, I'm actually using Podman, so that's why I uh, created a small script here to fiddle around a bit. I will put the script online. Um, basically what it's doing is that, uh, first of all, it's running the Forjo instance. Uh, it needs two ports, uh, one for the, um, uh, the, the web interface and one for the uh, SSH interface. Uh, so that you can clone with your uh, your uh, SSH keys, etc. Uh, I also have a data directory where where basically all the Git repositories will be stored in, uh, and that's it. You don't need to set up a database. I think it uses um, um, SQLite, yeah, which gets used to used by so many products these days. It's it's really cool, especially for configuration and stuff. You don't need a whole MySQL for that, which you could use. You could use Postgres, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm not planning to, uh, you know, host a lot of users here. Uh, so you can use this basically for yourself <laughs> to host your um, your repositories. I'm also running like after that uh, Docker or pod. I'm running a runner, which is basically. Um, this is the, the small application I was talking about, the runner application. I'm running 3.0.0. Um, here I'm also creating a socket file uh, because this, this, this runner needs a Docker host so that it can sort of like, you know, init initialize these pipelines uh, as Docker containers. So, uh, this is probably 
So this stuff you probably don't even need if you're just running Docker. Anyways, I, I set this up um, because Podman is very lightweight. It doesn't have an API service turned on by default. Uh, I had to do that manually. So here I'm checking, is it running? This API service, the Docker API, well, if not, it's starting it. Uh, it's sleeping for two seconds to sort of, uh, you know, have the socket ready up and running. Then it's testing if the Forgio runner binary is already downloaded. Uh, if not, it will download it. And um, then I'm actually, is checking for a .runner file, which gets uh, sort of generated as soon as you register it. So if, if it doesn't exist, this file, then it will basically run the register here with the token and the URL. And this basically makes the Forgeo runner binary connect to your uh, Forgeo instance and say, hey, I'm a runner, I'm ready to serve you. And then it gets an okay back. And then it appears here. Uh, it will say stat status offline then. The moment you start to uh, actually run the daemon, uh, then uh, it will say idle and then, yeah, it, it will start working. Um, I had to install this CNI plugins because I was running this from an Alpine Linux server. Um, and that was basically it. Then I was uh, ready to go. So this is a really cool way to uh, add runners on various systems, servers, which are perhaps not doing anything. Uh, and it's, I don't know, I think they did a great job. Uh, Gitia, Gox, Forgio, together they basically, um, I guess, uh, <laughs> sort of uh, summarized the whole GitHub team, GitLab's team, into a couple of commands. This is this is how open source works. It's basically uh, reducing uh, a lot of startup overhead into a single command. All right, I hope this helps. Um, there is one small thing. There was a really good guide. Uh, if you uh, Google Forgeo, or sorry, if you search for Forgeo Action, then you have the Forgeo Actions Guide. And here uh, basically uh, is explained how these things work. It's basically GitHub Actions. Uh, and there's also one, the, um, the Administrator Guide for Actions. And maybe I can show it. The URL is here. Uh, so this one here. And here it basically also explains all kind of um, caveats and, and quirks which you could uh, run into. And this is basically this uh, config.yaml file which I also generated. It can, it can basically uh, specify cache or you know how many parallel um, tasks. I've set it to one because I just have a tiny server there. Um, really, really cool stuff. I'm really surprised by the um, documentation of Forgeo as well. It also has a Nix OS uh, a runner. So if you're into Nix OS like me, uh, this is also really cool. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of cool stuff going on in the Forgeo space. If you don't want to uh, run your own Forgeo, but you want sort of a GitHub with uh, more feel-good uh, aspects, uh, for example, uh, run by a non-profit company, then uh, Codeberg is a really, really good alternative. It's uh, pretty professional. It's, um, it's backed by, uh, by a, a non-profit foundation in Berlin, Germany. Uh, if you look at the progress, this is this is getting really serious. So uh, yeah, just use that in case you're not into self-hosting. Okay, have a nice day. Cheers.